My friends, we are going to grow and get better together. This is not about me. This is about us. Welcome to Win Today with Johnny Martin. Welcome back, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Win Today with Johnny Martin. So happy to have you all back. Listen, if if you listened to the last conversation, uh, this is part two of what has been an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal discussion with my friend Rourke Denver. Just a quick recap. Rourke is a current owner and founder of Ever Onward, uh, which is a global leadership brand. We're going to talk much more about that in this episode. He is a former commander, United States Navy SEALs, ran training missions in Latin America, the Middle East, Africa, uh, just a phenomenal, phenomenal human being. We had an awesome conversation in the first episode. I'm so excited that you're joining us again. My friend, Rourke Denver, what's going on, brother? Hey, brother. Excited to be back. Uh, so excited to have you back. When we left off last time, I, I wanted to let the listeners know about that real sh- simple leadership philosophy. I really want to talk to you in today's episode uh, a little bit about um, the simplest leadership lesson you've ever learned we'll get to that in a minute and then i really want to talk more about your campfire sessions and let everybody know what those are about um and so we're going to just hit the ground running and and keep pressing here so when we talk about leadership for those of us that are listening again in the last episode we talked about how how i think people complicate things that are really simple uh but one of the things that i've seen uh in the books your books that i've read and, and we'll talk about those towards the end of the uh, end of the, the session here. But one of the things you said at a speech you gave, probably several, but one that I listened to, and I love this, and you explained it in more detail, so I want to give you a chance to do that here. Um, the simplest lesson you said, or one of the simplest lessons you said you ever learned was that calm is contagious. So I want you just yes. to sort of walk us through that, but also, is there a time where it, it is okay not to be? For guys like you and I, I just feel like that's not always the cloth that we're cut from. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, no, I got you. Yeah. I mean, calm is contagious is, is uh, you know, it's more of a, it's probably a full 10 minute conversation and story. And sure, so sure. I don't think we should do the whole thing here. We'll take up too much time. But the, the, the unpacking of it is, is when I was in basic training, um, we were doing our final training exercise. Uh, one of my peers, an officer in the class that's hoping to graduate and become a SEAL commando as well, was just kind of losing his head, screaming, uh, you know, at the troops trying to get us caught up to this timeline. And this master chief petty officer, this you know, senior ranking man, man in the United States uh, Navy, he kind of came out. And he, he just gave us this gift of saying, hey, gents, particularly just the officers. He just said, look, calm is contagious. I'm telling you, you, you have to recognize that if you keep your head. And, and this, this was a great explanation for was you know if you keep your head in our line of work you keep your head you (laughs) cannot be losing it you cannot break down and be panicked or um you know just energize the point where you can't think clearly make good decisions and kind of uh, advance the ball on the battlefield to solve problems and and the the fun thing about that calm is contagious line is you, you can you can supplant any word you want right like chaos is contagious panic is contagious stupid 100 percent contagious right so so <laughs> <laughs> kind of picking picking a concept or a, a word that that is powerful and, 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 and will translate to other people is really the key. And, and when we're talking about leaders, which is what we're touching on more than anything, is, is that the troops are looking at you. And, and so if you're keeping it together, there's a good chance they're going to keep it together. And if you're falling apart, they're probably going to fall apart, too. It's just kind of human nature um, to do that. And so uh, that that's the basics of calm is contagious. That's just a good place to be um, in a fight. I mean, I've never seen I, I've proven this in pretty horrific gunfights to where uh, if somebody lost their head, we got to pull them off the line and, and get them calmed down so they can make good decisions. I'm not saying you don't need to be animated, energized, yelling at some points doesn't mean you've lost the bubble um but you gotta you gotta keep your head or you're, you're in big trouble um I, I think to answer your question on is there times not to be calm um i would say no but by that i don't mean you're then passive and a hindu cow and not reacting to everything. i feel like i can i can get into a pretty nasty fight and still retain a calmness or a stillness which which warriors are capable of doing right like sure. when you start talking about musashi and and samurai and, and these great warrior cultures for all these civilizations they had this inner peace balance and ability to keep themselves calm in the worst of all situations that's usually what won won the fight that in their training yeah it makes it makes perfect sense and i'm what i'm trying to think about like in my own life as i'm listening to you explain that and it 
it's clear as a bell to hear it. But I think about those situations outside of a leadership perspective with, with me as a, as a human being, right. As a, as a husband, as a dad, or the people listening that feel like they're juggling 6,000 things in their life at one time. Is this something for you that obviously was practiced over decades, sharpened on the battlefield and now used as a great tool, not just as a, a leadership expert, but as a, as a man, a human being, do you, how do you practice this? How does one practice this in their own life? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, uh, I, I think, I think everything we do well, um, the answer is yes, you've practiced it or you've committed it to some level of training that you can execute it when it counts. Right. So, you know, I played combative sports my whole life. I played sports up through, you know, the division one college level where we were competing for national championships, and intense games, single digit games, sudden death type games. And, um, you know, so I, I probably did a lot of inoculation leading up to SEAL training. And then we get in SEAL training and we make it so absurdly hard and challenging and visceral and real that when you get to your first gunfight, when you get to your first round of combat it, it's not like the first time you were there i mean i just the first time somebody popped up with an ak-47 and started shooting at me it did not feel like the first time i'd seen it before in training my mind had committed to that moment what i needed to do i did what i needed to do and it worked you know so i mean all those things i think lead towards a good place in, in the comm space i mean I, I think everybody's got their own style when i talk to leaders i don't say hey you should be this you should be that i think i think you should be you and then sure. you know multiply or or, or kind of refine who that is. And, and there's some leaders that are kind of screamers and aggressive that work. And then there's a bunch of those that fail. And then there's cerebral whispering leaders that work. And then there's those of those that fail. I can say this when it comes to that calm is contagious. I'm, I'm a father. And on a few occasions, I've, I've lost it or I've, I've let my emotion get away from me and I've, I've yelled or, or gotten loud. I understand. And what I realized was, is I basically just scared my kids and I didn't have any impact beyond that. You know, and I think about when my dad was raising me, there were a couple of times he yelled and I don't remember those much. I damn sure remember the one or two times he whispered and said he was either disappointed or something powerful. Right. So it's like you can do a hell of a lot more impact and damage with a whisper than you can a yell. That's such a great, I mean, that's a, that's, that's a real thing. It's such a, that's such a great point. The other piece that, uh, resonates with me too. And, and just for our listeners, and it's just a curious question more than anything else, but you mentioned a couple of minutes ago, you know, the first time you were, you were in a, a outside of training where you were, uh, in harm's way, you and your team, and you were being shot at and, uh, you spoke about it, like having a cup of coffee, but I have to know as a man, when that happens for the first time, did it piss you off that somebody was trying to shoot at you? You know, I didn't, um, I didn't get my feelings hurt. You know I mean? I knew where I was. I knew who we were going to see. I think it's one of the funny things when you, when you, you hear, I, I heard a great line. I'll give the guy credit. Rob, Rob O'Neill, who's one of our famous seals, you know, he's on Fox news a bunch. Of, sure. You know, one of the guys that was in the room when Bin Laden went down, I'm familiar you, with, you him. know, I heard him recently when they're talking about like young, you know, college students or something that are offended by everything. Like, you know, just offended about everything. And I heard him on one of his interviews, very, comedy be like you know it's funny i had people trying to murder me and i was never offended right and, and so it, it didn't feel that way you know i mean i think um I, I saw a couple of my teammates get hurt uh and worse and that that definitely got me charged up i also realized that um you know i had to keep the balance of how we were going to address the battlefield and how we'd represent our country in, in return of those events so um so look i mean somebody tries to take your life i think you do feel it i think what you realize is if you let that emotion grab you in a bad way all of a sudden you're going to be like uh uh you know one of the jedis trying to balance between the the light and the dark side of the force you gotta you gotta stay in the light you know so sure. i didn't get my feelings hurt too bad but i was pretty happy to have won the exchange hey no doubt I, I, i'm happy as well i think we're, we're all very very grateful for that and for your service um no, i appreciate it let me ask you this as as a, a type a guy a very well trained not just in in the military and warfare and tactics but in somebody that has spent their life work leading in one capacity or another how do you know when it's time to follow and how comfortable are you how comfortable is Rourke denver being able to take a step back and, and is that where really we put the ego aside and humility really takes the forefront because I, i'm a I'm, I'm a big believer in you know i have the confidence i feel like i can i can have a conversation uh with anybody and and 
I may not know relative to the topic everything that they're discussing, but I feel like I have enough bearing, enough self-respect, and enough respect for others to be able to sit in a room with anybody and to have an intelligent conversation. What I uh, struggle with sometimes is people that are in positions of authority who lead in a certain type of way uh, that flies in the face of sort of my ethos, right? Or what I believe to be uh, not just from a work perspective, but from a life perspective, um, I, I have a hard time handling it. How do we, how do you, as somebody who does this for a living, has done it their entire adult life through sports, the SEALs, your business all over the country, how comfortable are you stepping back and, and allowing yourself to be led? And, and yeah, what are some tricks to do that? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great, it's, it's a great thought stream and I'm glad we're talking about it. I mean, the one beauty of the military is the military does it for you. So of course, you know, when you start, whether you're an officer or an enlisted person, there's a whole lot of people up the chain of command that outrank you from day one, right? Now I, I might as an enlisted or, or a junior author outrank a senior master chief, but in skill set and behavior, I don't out outrank that guy. Right. He's got all the corporate knowledge and all the all, all the all the goods I want anyway. So you gotta recognize, yeah, while technically uh, you know, he's supposed to salute me, you better believe I'm gonna be wait uh, waited on bated breath to hear what he has to say and what he can teach me to become a better leader officer and follower so yeah i think followership is something that every great great leader has to develop the, the one thing i i used to i figured out i think early on and, and this just has to do with being a good teammate but it, it's it's really important and impactful for organizations certainly at the corporate level but it's the same for families or whatever else is that we have this you know kind of inherent desire to you know know what's right or wrong by our compass and therefore if the person that's leading you if they're not doing it right that you're like i i don't like this i can't deal with it so i'm going to sabotage it right which is just the hundred percent 180 out wrong thing to do Absolutely. right like so if you're the person that's dealing with a tough leader that that's a tough road and, and i don't envy you although you're going to take a bunch of great lessons out of it here's here's the beauty of that situation you, you can go down one or two paths you can say okay i've got a tyrannical horrible uh you know incompetent leader that i am now beholden to and i have to like deal with so you can either become that toxic force that doesn't help that person get better doesn't help them achieve the job even if they're not doing a good job of leading it and, and then walk away there from that toxic and poisoned and worse for the wear the organization fails your experience fails and probably the leader in you fail, right or you can say look i got this toxic terrible leader here's what i'm going to do i'm going to work my butt off to try and make him or her better because really what else am i going to do but what i just described is what you're going to do and that's good for nobody that's right. so you can develop your own ability to operate in an uncomfortable situation you can look at how that leader does things and say roger that i am putting everything this leader does into my bag of tricks and i am never going to do that when my time comes to sit in that seat uh. and so the organization flourishes if that you're that person you become a better future leader because you just put aside a whole bunch of stuff you know hurts people isn't effective and is bad for you so you can make lemons out of lemonade in those situations and, and, it, and the yeah. only thing you're going to do when you when you go toxic is discredit the organization and really yourself because you're going to get the reputation for being the person that that it is that isn't somebody that's going to put their head down and work when things get tough if you do the latter and you just do the simple things as best you can you keep a good attitude that stuff gets recognized like a red star cluster, right? Those are the people that are like, oh, man, they were working for that guy or gal and came out of it smelling like a rose. I want that person on my team. Absolutely. And I think a huge piece of that, too, is, and I'm sure you've seen this throughout your whole career in leadership, but as people approach their own lives, too, it is very, very easy. And we live in a world where everybody is chomping at the bit to tell you what all the problems are. But very rarely will that person step up and say, well, yes, I identify this as a problem and it really bothers me, but here are some solutions I came up oh. with independently and on my own. I did it on my own time. I didn't do it on company time because I'm here to do what you asked me to do. So that's what yep. I'm gonna do on company time. But on my own time, because this is important to me, either this business, this family, this this passion of mine. So instead of just complaining about what's wrong or what I perceive is wrong, here's what I did on my own. I came up with some solutions for growth. Let me know what you think. Because I think a lot of people are afraid to have difficult conversations, right? But people, societally, people just don't like having difficult conversations. But I've, I've found in my own life, as I've learned to embrace it, and it took me much longer than it took you, 
but I've garnered so much more respect from the people that I work with and in my own family and in my own circle when I've been much more candid and honest and said, okay, I don't necessarily agree, but here are some things I've thought of that maybe will help us find some middle ground or help us make this outcome a little bit more effective for all parties involved. Well, the all a hundred percent. I mean, you're, you're, you just hit the nail on the head. And, and one of the things that, that I used to do when I finally got to the, um, you know, what you'd call the executive level of leadership. So as the executive officer of advanced training, there's three people that run that command. My, you know, the commanding officer who runs the entire vision of the company, the executive officer, that was my job, which really just does the nuts and bolts of making that, that commanding officer's vision happen. And the senior enlisted command master chief that runs that thing. But I would have, you know, I had 20 some odd departments with hundreds of people. I mean, I had almost a thousand person command. And any one of those department heads would come into my office on any given Tuesday amongst six others that had competing entities or competing issues and requirements of me. And when they'd come in with a problem, the, the very first thing I'm going to ask them, like, okay, what's the solution? And if they, you know, put their hands up, like, I don't know, solve it. I'd be like, get out of my office. I'm going to go talk to the next guy. And then when that person comes in and said, hey, here's the three solutions. This is one I recommend. I'm like, sweet, do that one. Yeah. I mean, you know how easy you make it for a senior le leader to give you what you want if you give them what you in a in a package that makes them think this is going to be easier for me to do sure and that's the way you do it you come in with solutions you come in with problems to a senior leader you, you're gonna you're, you're gonna quickly go nowhere in that organization sure and and if nothing else Rourke, even if that senior leader or that person in your family or that person in your job even if they don't agree with the solution at least they know you took the time to try to come up with oh, one for sure there was for effort sure. Sure. behind it and i think that's what's yep. huge um no doubt about it. What What do you think about, um, and this is, you, you've talked a lot about the, the warrior mindset, and, and this is something that fascinates me on a million levels, but I, I think for the, the person that's listening, um, one of the greatest gifts I think we can provide people is, okay, so if I wanted to take all of this stuff that work has been sharing and that we've been talking about, and I want to try something today in my own life or tomorrow morning if god is it blesses me with another day i would love to get a, a snippet or several however you're comfortable advice from a seal a leader a successful businessman on how a non-seal which is most of us most of us are not right can work every day do something every day to develop that warrior mindset what what's a piece that that's me my, anybody that's listening can take and say, okay, I want to start developing that warrior mindset. And I, I you know, I'm not going to go through SEAL training, but how, how do I start to do that? Well, I think, you know, we talked about it previously a little bit, but it, it, it's worth revisiting in that do hard things. Yeah. And so everybody's got some variant or, or their metric for what's hard. I mean, what's hard for me is not necessarily what's hard for you is not necessarily what's hard for a soccer mom is not necessarily what's hard for you know a high school um you know sophomore so so you got to rate your your level of hard but but everybody can find that right we all have these rhythms that is our life and it's pretty easy to take a sidestep out of even one part of that rhythm and just give a little bit extra there right like if you're trying to learn the you know piano and, and you practice uh you know monday tuesday Friday for 15 minutes, you know, add a day, add a minute to each one of those, or five minutes to each one of those sessions and give a little bit more. Sure. Sounds like a small thing. That stuff starts adding up in spades when you look at over the, the long run, which most things are marathons as opposed to sprints, you know? So I, I, I'd one, find hard things to do. I, I'd go constantly pursue something that's new. I mean, the, the one thing that, that we know is the case is when you just get in a rut and do the same things, there's not a lot of growth there. So when you do things like uh, learn a new language, learn an instrument, you know, work on some new workout routine or, or whatever it might be, that that's what stretches us into a better place and, and kind of enriching the lives we live. I mean, I think there's th those great lines about, you know, show many, show me a man's, uh, you know, hobbies and things like that. And you'll kind of be able to take their their measure and I, I think that's true i mean i think our work is hugely important and if you can combine the two that's great but you see what people do in their leisure time and how they spend it and it really is a window into the type of person there's no doubt they are and, and, yeah, and what they value you know so th there's no I, doubt. I just think you gotta you gotta get uncomfortable and you gotta push yourself and then and then when you do all that stuff whatever you pick no matter how hard no matter how not hard you you choose whatever that is when you when you make the choice don't quit 
Like, go do it. It's so easy to stop, whether it be a diet, a workout program, learning something new. Almost everyone, and I mean, talk about just a simple lesson, but almost everyone gives up, right? So, I mean, just think of the things that you start at some point that you wish you'd stuck with. You'd be there. I mean, if you stuck with it, you'd know it. You'd learned it. You would have mastered it. I mean, it just really is such a tremendous It's absolutely true. Uh, You know, everything that you share resonates with me. And one of the things I tell people I work with all the time, whether it's families or or students or when I go out and speak, (laughs) is that you should intentionally put yourself in situations where the likelihood of failure at the first attempt is higher than the likelihood of success. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Because, love you, that, you're, right? because you're really going to get a sense of, you mentioned before, everybody has sort of this rhythm of, of their life, and I completely agree with that. But as I've gotten older and stepped outside my and really worked on my own insecurities and, um, you know, I don't know if John, you know, for those of you that are listening, Rourke and I, a huge reason that we've connected is we have a very uh, a close friend in common, John Cena of the WWE. But when you talk about this stuff, for me, one of the biggest sort of aha moments was a few years ago when uh, I was down in his gym and I've talked about this on a previous episode, but um, everybody goes in and, and, and you know how John gets after it when he trains and works and lives, oh, yeah. you know, he's, he has that warrior mindset, even though he's never been in the military, he's as warrior as it, as it comes, you know, oh, and, for sure. and I'm in his weight room and uh, I'm sitting there in flip flops and shorts and I'm not lifting and he puts his arm around me and he's like, Hey, uh, you're not training today. And I was just at a place in my life where things were not good. None of it was good, (laughs) you know? And I'm like, nah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hang with you guys and chill out, but, but I'm not going to lift. And that was the day about two and a half, three years ago, where I really noticed a huge change in my life. Cause I walked out of there and I reached out to him and another buddy. And I said, you know what? No more. I'm, I'm, I'm not authentic. I'm full of insecurities. I'm, I'm talking the talk, but I am far from walking the walk. And, and then I intentionally very, very regularly put myself in positions where the likelihood of failure is much greater than the likelihood of success at my first attempt. And and man, did I learn, wow, the bar that I've set for myself is too freaking low. It's too yeah, low. No, I love that. And then I love probably that. the great one of the greatest yeah. gifts I've ever had in my life. So everything you're, you're sharing makes such good sense, man. Yeah, no, I love that. And, and, you know, we've we've also gone to this place where, you know, failure has become this bad word. And you're just like, look, that's where all the good stuff lives, right? That's where all the fire and the motivation and the lessons come. You know, I mean, I, I think undefeated uh, sports seasons are just total BS, right? They're a waste. I mean, they, you know, they make for good history, <laughs> but like that team doesn't learn anything. You know, yeah, and it's, it's like a... the years, like I played four years at Syracuse and lacrosse. We won the national championship twice when I was there. I know you had a and, lot of two success. years that we won the championship we had three loss three lost seasons you know we, we we had those thumps and those those hits early where i was like okay we better shore up that we better work on this let's be more prepared for the fight i remember my junior year we won the national championship against maryland and the final four was us against um I, I'm embarrassed. I can't remember. It was either you know Princeton or, or or Virginia, one of the one of the big teams at that point. But Hopkins, Johns Hopkins, had gone into that Final Four undefeated, and Maryland knocked them off, one game short of the championship game. You're like, there you go, man. They they, right. they hadn't they hadn't taken any licks until it counted, and then they went home early. And, and we'd what taken an, those we'd taken those thumps, and then we were ready to take it on. Yeah, yeah. what an awful time to learn that lesson, right? It's better. Oh, it's the worst. Yeah. It's the worst. Uh, yeah. As we, you know, as we're approaching sort of the end of our discussion here, I want to really just turn it over to you, and I want to for all the listeners that are out there, uh, if you go to uh, to workdenver dot com and you check out Ever Onward, um, I really, really encourage all of you, whether you are a uh, corporate level leader, somebody looking to improve your own life as an individual, as a company, as a corporation, Rourke has, and, and this is different and more unique than anything I've ever seen from a leadership perspective. And and Rourke calls them campfire sessions. Uh, I've just started to, to look into them a little bit. I can tell you for sure, if, if you've got space in any of them, I'm going to sign on as soon as I can because I want to keep digesting this stuff as often as I oh, can. Oh, yeah, we'll have you. We'll have you. But I definitely want you to talk to our listeners uh, about the campfire sessions, the premise behind them, what you are doing with them, and, and because it's a really, really cool concept, and I think – People will just love them, man. So the floor is yours to talk about those. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You know, the campfire sessions are a little bit of a response um, to 
I do a lot of corporate speaking events. I do a lot of, you know, big business, big stage events where, you know, company X or a group of companies for a big uh, convention or something have me come in to speak. And, I, and I've got a bunch of followers. You know, I don't have a massive following, but the people that follow me, there's a lot of them that aren't connect to those companies don't have access to come you know really get some interface and some questions in and some time in with me so i want to create a vehicle through which i could do that that i could get out to a larger audience and kind of spend time i love podcasts as we do this i mean i digest so much of my information and my entertainment now from podcasts but i kind of wanted to create um, a vessel through which I could talk stories, share leadership axioms and, 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 and concepts and do it in a way that was special, not to me, but I thought people would experience special um, when they participate. And the campfire just seemed like the no brainer. I mean, you mentioned our buddy, John, um, you know, I've sat in a lot of campfires with Big John Cena and had some of the best conversations I can remember. I've also <laughs> sat at campfires with some of the best friends I've ever had. We haven't said a word to each other. It still felt like purposeful time. Absolutely. There's something so elemental and primal about a campfire if you haven't sat at a campfire you are doing your life a disservice if you sit at a fire and stare into those flames and feel its warmth it is like it shuts down all these operating systems you got running in the background of your mind that you don't need and it turns on these operating systems that like go back to the caveman that are just really really neat and they're kind of energizing so um the campfire sessions in, in its initial construct is you can go to rockdenver.com sign up for my campfire sessions you can buy an individual session i've got three more i've already done one i've got three more going this year the next one's may 6th you can also buy all four for a package deal if you buy them and you attend them live that's the best way to do it is to be online we also have some kind of vip seats um that can, people can purchase to actually physically come to the campfire and those are starting to fill up which is fun so i'll have people sitting around a campfire i'll tell a story but then on a web web platform so just sitting from your home on your phone on your laptop or wherever you want to pipe that thing in you're in the conversation you can send questions in advance i do live questions and, and kind of conversation with the audience both at the campfire and those from the out stations and it just gives people a chance to do what you and i are doing you can ask me any question you want to talk about you want to talk about current events you want to talk about nuclear threats across the pond you want to talk about politics uh you know religion whatever i'll talk about it all i don't duck questions and we have a lot of fun with it and uh i'm really enjoying it those things are going to morph beyond just those sessions which are kind of open to anybody that wants to kind of buy into the process i'm going to do some where i you know do it more podcasty with some big name people and sure. interesting folks that we can unpack concepts but it's going to gravitate beyond that into experiences where i'm going to you know let a company book it but i also want to give individuals a chance to come to come to a full experience like a multi-day um event where we're gonna we're gonna do some you know physical stuff we're gonna do some suffering we're gonna have a lot of fun and we're gonna sit at a couple campfires and work some things out so a lot of growth there if you get to rourkedenver.com and check out um the ever onward brand the stuff we're doing there um we're, we've got some special stuff coming uh, what a what a phenomenal phenomenal idea uh for those of you that haven't um checked out rourke's uh, website or aren't familiar with with his work i strongly strongly suggest you get on there i've already signed up rourke uh, weeks ago for uh, commander's coffee so i get the updates uh which is really cool and, because the, and the next one's coming through those commander coffees I, I i've had a couple of people already say you know i haven't gotten a coffee i only saw the one that's purposeful too sure. i feel like we're inundating each other with so much information you get those friday motivational emails then you just go auto delete because it's so consistent that i, I want to make it like sparing you don't want sure. you to want them so that that's kind of the purpose on that but another one's coming soon and it gives you yep. a chance it gives the reader like me a chance to digest what's shared uh yep. and then work to try to implement it into your own life but it's it's great for those of you that that go to rourke's website the commander's coffee there's absolutely no charge for them uh, and there's just it's highlighted with really strong leadership principles and we've used the word leadership a lot but Remember, folks, these are things that you can implement into your own lives, whether you are a corporate level leader, whether you're a dad or a husband trying to be more present with your family, whether you're a mom who's volunteering to coach uh, your son and daughter's baseball team. These these premises, these mindsets are universal. They're not specific to running a company. It, they're specific to a way of living that is going to allow you to have more growth, more enjoyment, uh, more satisfaction out of your life than you know right now. And whether you feel like, hey, I, I have a great life, 
I, 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 great. I'm happy for you as do I, but I'm, I don't want to settle in that. I don't want to rest in that. I want to continue to grow. So for those of you that have had a chance to drive in your car with Rourke Denver for the last hour, for those of you that have, have listened on one of my podcast platforms to Rourke for the last hour, uh, there are other places where you can get access to his continued knowledge, his continued growth, and the information that he wants to share with you folks as you continue on your journey. My friend, I cannot thank you enough uh, for taking the time uh, to share with me and our audience your experiences um, as a SEAL, a leader, uh, and just a, a great human being. I'm, I'm honored and grateful that you took the time, and I look forward to, to some conversations down the road. Thank you so much. No, th thank you for having me, and let's, uh, let's get around a campfire soon. Uh, without a doubt. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for tuning in to Win Today with Johnny Martin. We just wrapped up Episode 2 with Rourke Denver. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Be good to those you love. Let them know you love them, and have a great day. Thank you to Seven Roads Media and Cloud9 Marketing Group for co-producing the show. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on whatever platform you're on. Without you, I cannot continue to do what I love. You can follow me personally on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Real John C. Martin. I'd love to hear from you, so please reach out with comments and questions after each episode. Your comments push me to get better every day. As always, thank you for your continued support, and don't forget... Win today.